My name is Logan Larson. I am the Print Expo moderator for this session. Um, I'm just kind of here to set the Zoom meeting up and make sure everything's fine. Um, I am also like a second hand moderating the, moderating the Q&A or the chat. So if you have any questions, send them there. Um, and I'll come back on at the end to kind of wrap things up. And yeah, I'll hand it off to Ross and Chris. Hi. Welcome everyone. Uh, thank you so much for being here today. Um, my name is Ross Mazapapa. I'm the assistant teaching professor of printmaking and photography at Bowling Green State University, uh, and that's Bowling Green, Ohio. Um, and this is. Hi. I'm I'm Chris. Um, do you want me to yeah. Yeah. Um, So hi, I'm Chris. I'm Ross's partner. Um, I've been. Uh, helping him along with the roller making process um, for the last couple of years. I am an adjunct at Adrian College up in Michigan. There I teach printmaking, painting, drawing, and uh, two-dimensional design. Um, yeah, and so like I said, I've been helping Ross with the uh, prototyping of the rollers and sort of the workshop format. Um, specifically, I um, have helped with and inspired a lot of the rainbow rollers and marbling techniques that you might see on the uh, Instagram page when you check out Ross Rollers. Um, otherwise, my role in a typical in-person workshop is I usually go around helping the students and just being a second set of hands. Um, but today, yeah. we're in a virtual format. I, I was just gonna try and I just um, muted Tracy and that seems to be helping with the echo. And then I'm gonna say the question and then maybe Tracy can respond. So Veronica wants to know, what is the word? Oh, okay. Go ahead. Oh, um, so today what I'll be doing is um, operating the cameras for Ross and I'll be doing my best to try to field any questions that you have in the chat to him. Um, and if I can answer it, I'll um, type back to um, those of you who have questions in the chat where possible. So uh, that's kind of going to be my role today, mostly off camera, but I just wanted to say hello and uh, meet everyone and thank you all for being here. And I'm going to pass it back to Ross right. now. Thanks, Chris. Yeah. Right. Hi, folks. So I've um, been talking to folks at Print Austin for a couple of years now. Uh, really excited about this. Unfortunately, due with everything going on, can't come down and uh, make rollers this year, but hopefully next year. Uh, so I just want to talk to you folks today uh, a little bit about um, my roller making process. Uh, we nicknamed it Ross Roller, just because we like alliteration. Um, so I'm going to go over a brief overview of sort of what this project has become in the last four years, and then I want to leave plenty of time at the end of um, end of this for us to have some Q and A um, and some other things as well. But this whole project kind of started about two and a half years ago uh, when I had a lot of undergraduate students um, asking me how they can keep uh, access to a print shop, how they get access to good quality equipment, but also with you know very limited funds to come from out of undergrad. Um, and that kind of led me into this idea of, well, you know, having a roller because they, they like to work large um, or even just, you know, for other processes, we need to see the bigger roller than what we can get from a speed ball. Um, and obviously the tactic roller is a bit very expensive, um, but they're great. They're awesome. I like those rollers. Um, so I kind of started out with this idea of how do I make something that is affordable? something that's accessible and something that also uses a very limited amount of tools. Um, and that's, and this is kind of what I've come up with in the last couple years as well. All right. Um, so uh, most of all the things that I'm gonna be using today come from your local hardware store. Um, and there's only a couple of specialty products that I, I, I buy uh, through a mold making company called Smooth On. Um, and they're an international company and they also have really great technical support as well. Um, and so that's kind of why I started utilizing their products, uh, particularly, um, is because you can get them almost all around the world. All right. Um, so when I first started up, um, I got to make a mold, right? Um, thing about rollers is you need to be a nice seamless, um, seamless round shape. We don't want to have any, any creasing in there. So, so making a roller rolling like aluminum flashing is kind of out of, out of the deal. Um, if you focus on anything like name, hands-on, um, you certainly come across, you know, PVC pipe quite a bit. 
Um, so I am using primarily PVC pipe as my mold making, as well as the core for my rollers. Um, I will say, uh, when you're picking out your PVC, um, your hardware store is great, but I do prefer to shop local and not just local, but like the, the good quality, like drain and sewer uh, companies that mostly sell towards, um, you know, contract with the business. Um, PVC is, is usually very uniform on the outside, but on the inside of there, you can if you look through uh, lower grade or lower quality PVC that tend to, tend to get sent to the, um, you know, like low Home Depot. Uh, it can be misformed from the extrusion process on the inside and that ends up putting bumps and dings and everything. Um, and that's fine for the inside. Um, but obviously when that comes to casting, they could also end up being low spots or high spots when we roll. So I tend to go for a, a little bit more expensive. Uh, so when I started out, I bought these heavy duty end caps like this. And I have a little side camera here so that we can look in the top right corner. And so I would glue in a, glue in a base piece like this. So this acts as my inner dimension. Because obviously, to fill this whole thing up with, um, well, to fill the whole four inch diameter that I'm using here would take quite a bit of quite a bit of rubber. So to utilize as much as I can. So really, a most basic one. Thanks, Chris. Okay. Making a mold out of PVC is just taking an inner core and an outer core, and then having a base on there. And now, of course, these are great, um, pretty heavy duty. But as you kind of got into doing workshops, uh, these PVC bases uh, can be a bit expensive. And we're sometimes doing workshops with 16 people. So I started uh, laser cutting my own, um, just, a, just a round base with a lip on there. And then I also laser and break. It's quite hard to see which, which one. I can really see there, but I have little engraved rings in there. So when I when I attach the PVC to the base with just some hot glue, um, it, I can get it lined up perfectly. So we have nice even edges all the way around. Also, um, it's important to make sure that you have a mold release for your, um, for your mold. Um, and I'm using Smooth On's universal mold release. Um, it works really great with the two. Universal Mold Release. I'm going to put links to everything in the chat at the end here, folks, for you. Uh, this has really good instructions on it. Um, just follow that up. I usually do two applications. It's okay. I usually do two applications when I'm using brand new uh, PVC, just because one of the hardest things that we ran into, especially in our first workshop in Philadelphia, um, was releasing the casting from the PVC pipe. Sorry, I think you just got muted. Sorry, sorry. I think. See. Oops. Oh, am I back? You're back. Okay. Sorry. All right. Sorry. Great. No, no, it's okay. It's okay, Logan. Um, yeah. So I use again two coats of this. Um, when uh, when making rollers, it's a lot like a cast iron uh, pan. The more you use it, the better, the more non-stick it becomes. Uh, which is great. Brush it on. Yeah, brush it on. Well, I have all the instructions on here, which is brush it on, uh, brush it off. Using too much mold release, though, can cause what's, what's called champagne bubbles to happen in the rubber. Um, so you don't want to use too much, but you want to have just a couple of nice thin applications of this. Again, I'm, I'm attaching my PVC to either my base with a little bit of hot glue uh, that'll get scraped off at the end. I do that on the inside, I do that on the outside um, after the mold release, we're ready to go. So the rubber I have found, any, are we, are we good so far? Mold making so far, just hardware store stuff? Cut things down, pretty simple. Uh, of course, folks, please, uh, please feel free to use the chat. Christina and Logan are both watching the chat and they're gonna try and field as many questions as we can. So the rubber I'm using for this, which I'm sure you folks are all really interested in, uh, I'm using Smooth On brand, uh, Rio Flex 30. Chris, if you want to type that in, in the chat. 
And I'm going to have links to folks, so if you, if you want to be patient. Uh, I like Rio Flex. It's a, it's a synthetic urethane uh, rubber that is a two-part rubber. I don't have an example here with me today. Um, shipping takes a while for it to get here for me. Um, it's a, it's a man-made rubber, so it's urethane uh, rubber, polyurethane. It's not quite as nice as the Boone and Nitrile um, that you would normally get from like a package roller or the natural rubber of like a speedball, um, but it does work. It does last and it's very affordable. Uh, they make a two pound kit that's like $30. Um, and when you're making a, I call this a standard workshop roller, it's four inches in diameter, nine inches in length. Uh, I can typically get about two rollers out of one two pound kit out of that, which is nice, right? This is a good, good roller. I think a similar size and price roller from, uh, from package is about $300. Um, all said and done, when I'm making two rollers here, um, usually about a hundred bucks starting off here for everything, maybe a little bit more than a hundred bucks depending on where you live. Um, now, I will say in, in, in workshop scenarios, um, it takes two days to actually make a roller. Um, we spend one day of a workshop building the mold and casting the rubber. And the casting the rubber is a pretty long process. Um, and it also takes 16 hours to vulcanize at room temperature. So that's normally what we do one day. Uh, and then the second day, uh, we come in, we demold the rubber, um, and then we assemble the roller. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of kind of squishing a lot of information into, uh, into here. So I'm not necessarily going to go over uh, the casting process. Uh, I'm really following uh, the instructions that SmoothOn gives me for using the RioFlex. Um, one benefit, I should go back to the RioFlex, is what's nice is it comes in different barometers. So I think it comes down to 20 all the way up to like 70 or maybe even above. Uh, so that means that you can actually cast your own viscosity rollers too, right? You can have a soft 20 medium 30 and a harder 40 or 50, um, which really then again, opens up uh, the accessibility, um, especially if you want to do viscosity printing or other things like that. We're good so far? You could, you could give some tips about the rubber, oh. just like, you know, mixing it and those sorts of things. Oh yeah. Um, so mixing the rubber can be a bit, um, a bit arduous at first. Um, I have, I have great, uh, I go into great detail usually in workshops, um, but there is a part A and part B. Um, and you can actually, as you can see, uh, change the colors of it. So um, I'm, I like to tint my rubber when I'm mixing it. Uh, I'm using, again, smooth on brand, I'm using what's called UVO uh, tint, urethane tint. Um, and what's nice is that it adds a little bit of UV. It adds a little bit of UV protection to the rubber itself. As we know, all, all rubber is affected by ultraviolet light, uh, even the speed ball and tankage rollers. Uh, so it's important to make sure that uh, we keep them out of light, but this adds a little bit of um, protection for them. And obviously, um, changes the color. Otherwise, it turns out to like a weird, like beige color that's almost like, uh, almost like skin in a weird way. Uh, which um, <laughs> my students are really uh, laughing about the first couple ones that we made but didn't have any attention to them. Um, and then from there, like one thing I have to say that Christina has really helped me with is that uh, she's helped me develop the um, marbling technique. I'm gonna get it. The color also helps protect it from UV damage. Yeah. So um, one benefit from one benefit from using urethane rubber, so obviously man-made rubber, um, is that um, it holds on to its color really, really well. Natural rubbers and blue and nitro rubbers, they will tint and stain over time. So that's why the majority of the time, um, like rollers are black because they'll eventually just turn black because they just take on whichever color. Uh, but because of the synthetic nature of RioFlex, uh, you put a color on it and it barely stains anything at all. Um, I don't think, think I have any staining on any of my rollers. And so they hold on to the color uh, that they have, which is you know pretty nice and unique and fun. Right. Are we doing good so far, folks? Are you crazy? So eventually after you cast the rubber, um, if anyone's at the, the MAPSI demo, this is the one I have done there. 
Um, you kind of so this whole mold makes a big rubber sleeve like this, um, and then we're gonna reuse. Well, we don't reuse uh, well, we use the PVC, and I'll use three inch PVC, and this actually becomes the core for my roller. Um, and while I'm on here, oh. Yeah. And so if you have your sleeve, then we, we, we do the assembly. Um, so if you were to take a workshop or have me in for a workshop, uh, something I like to do is I make, uh, I have a laser cutter that I have access to. Um, and I like to make custom little laser cut. Chris, if you don't mind switching. Okay. Um, can you address how to clean the roller or you probably will uh, later? I'll address how to clean the roller at the very end if folks don't mind. Uh, typically, when, when I do a uh, workshop, I like to make a little custom end caps for it. So here's one from Mapsy. Um, Matt Hobson Walker was so kind to invent to uh, invite me out to Fresno, um, and this rabbit design is one that we did for the folks out in Fresno. But there are alternate there are alternatives to having a laser cutter. Um, you can just simply make your own template and cut it out with a jigsaw. Um, they also make what's called a gripper plug at the hardware store and a gripper plug will fit into your PVC end and then it has a threaded, a threaded side on there that you can use to make handles with as well. So there is a hardware store solution. You don't necessarily need a laser cutter uh, to make that. So um, we have the PVC core, we have the rubber sleeve, we have the end caps, and then this handle actually goes all the way through. Um, and then the other thing that I, I like to bring to workshops as well um, is, of course, of course, uh, with every roller, we need a caddy. Uh, so here I have a little flat pack laser cut design for a caddy as well. It's nice, it, it, it's great. Can you cover the durometer choice again? The durometer choice? Yeah, what you use and what you recommend for different situations. Um, I do recommend using 30 um, durometer. It's pretty forgiving because if you have any imperfections in your PVC, um, so you might end up with like a mini minuscule or some small little um, low spots every once in a while. I think 30 is soft enough that if you, if you press, you can actually get it, um, work those out after a while. Uh, you can also go as low as 20 if you want a soft roller and if, you're, if you don't have really good quality PVC with lots of pocking in it. Uh, you can also go up to 20. Um, when you, if you do have fairly clean and even on the inside um, extruded PVC, um, the higher numbers like 40 and 50 are really nice. Those are also really good for like really delicate printing processes as well. Again, like viscosity printing um, or some very delicate like laser etch relief printing too. Um, clean. Um, once you have the, rub the roller assembled, uh, cleaning of the rubber is really similar to anything else. Um, my preferred method, and I'm using traditional oil-based media here at BGSU, um, is I degrease my roller with um, what's it called? food grade mineral oil. So that, that breaks down all the oil. Uh, and then I actually like to degrease the rubber with using a 50-50 mix of white vinegar and water. Uh, and I find that decreasing rollers, and I've done it, I do this on all the rollers now, so our speedball brayers, our tankage uh, rollers, decreasing with the vinegar water is gentle enough that it won't dry or damage the rubbers, uh, but it gets any extra oil off of them, which as you folks know, leaving oil on will eventually break down the rubber as well as, you know, flaring is a thing that happens on the edges there too. Um, can you talk about uh, vinegar, it was, it was a 50-50 mix. So 50% white vinegar, 50% water for my degreasing mixture. And can you talk about how you get nice clean edges on either side of the... Oh yeah. So um, when you cast, in the casting, right? In the rubber, Chris? Um, no. So I think like after, how do you curate your roller so that you have... Oh, cut off the edges? Yeah. Oh. Oh yeah, so you'll, you'll probably need to trim down the edges of the of the rubber when you're done with it or when you assemble it. Um, cutting rubber can be really tricky um, in, a, in painstaking. Um, I like to use a brand new razor blade 
And then I dip it in uh, soapy water. So like dish soap, like Dawn dish soap and some water. And the dish soap just acts as a lubricant so that when, and I use a sawing motion. So as I go around, I will saw and then dip in the water and keep on sawing. And that really helps line the, um, glide the razor blade all the way around. I then finish up with some wet and dry sandpaper. So 400 grit wet sandpaper, then 600 grit wet sandpaper. And that'll just buff and smooth the edges out to get nice clean. So um, I love making rollers. I love sharing this. This has really become uh, a lot of my life in the last uh, couple years here, um, slowly taking over in some ways. Um, and so um, I've thought of a, you know, I, I get asked to do workshops a lot and I get asked to do, do lectures a lot and it gets to be a lot. And it gets to be too much for me to keep up with. Um, so I, one thing I wanted to announce today at um, Print, Print Expo is that I've spent the time the last several weeks and I've compiled a how-to guide um, that's over 3,000 words. Uh, and I'm also including uh, my laser files as well. So laser file for the caddy, the end caps, um, as well as the base for casting if you want to make your own base. Um, and my instructions specifically go over how to make a roller that's just like this one. So four inches in diameter, nine inches wide. Um, and so I have that available. I'm gonna pause real quick, gripping the bottom line, my computer back. I'm gonna share with you folks here, something on. Logan, am I able to share my screen on my, my laptop? I can add you, I can let you here. If you don't mind. Yeah. Did that work? Yes. Cool. Hi folks, can you see my screen? So, um, so I'm selling these instructions and everything included for, for $30. Um, this all goes to the research. Uh, I, get, I get no research um, funding or, or help here at my university. So everything for the last uh, two and a half years has been out of pocket. Um, so you'll get my 10-page, uh, 3,000 word instructions. Um, I also have a chart here as well to help you scale up or scale down how long you would like your roller to be. And this is set up for the two pound trial kit of Rio Flex that you can get from Smooth On. Um, so I think you can go all the way up to 16 inches with one two pound kit. Uh, and I go all the way down the four inches there too. So if you wanna make uh, brayers or short rollers or anything like that. Again, you get the mold base, the roller caps, and then the caddies with one being a five millimeter thickness, which is what I have today. And then another roller caddy design that does four millimeter thickness. And one benefit I, I really do like about these is, I mean, we've, made, we've been able to make 16 rollers in one, um, in one workshop, so in two days. Um, they're made out of PVC and wood. Um, they're really lightweight. Um, as you know, with a regular roller, they can be a little bit heavy, especially the bigger they get. Uh, also being aluminum, if you were to drop it, you could easily ding the roller, but just because this is plastic, um, it bounces right back. If it breaks, you just glue it back together. Um, again, really simple things. And of course, uh, this is just a really short overview of you know whole two day process that I do. And, um, Really, I go in amazing amount of details that I can give you, I can give everyone in my in my long instructions available for you folks. Um, right. Uh, any well, okay. And then one other thing. So again, this is all very very quick. I'm gonna throw down here into the chat. Into the chat, folks. If you don't mind looking there, uh, I've got some links for again, the rubber, the mold release, as well as the tinting agents that I'm using.
And then included as well um, in that instructions. And I'm, one thing I'm gonna share with you folks today is I have uh, three videos that Christina and I produced um, for another conference um, that is an abbreviated three, three short videos. Um, that's a visual overview of us making a marble roller, actually making this one here, um, as well as my demolding and my assembly process. So I know I've just kind of gone through things verbally today, uh, but you can actually see us do it in, in, in three short videos um, through YouTube. So if you want to copy those down, uh, and there's a link um, to, the, to the instructions and SVG files. I see there's a lot of questions going on um, in the chat. Which is what I Okay. So I would like to, so. Oh, uh, I had a question about the, the brayers. Um, the brayers are a bit more complicated and I'm still, I'm still kind of perfecting the way that the, um, the way that they connect uh, all the way through with the threaded rotting and I wanna add some bearings to them. Um, so there's nothing about the brayers uh, at this moment, um, but I am working on making an addendum to my instructions so that we can design brayers. I'm also not very happy with the handle. Um, they work, I mean, they work for me because I know I put them together, but they certainly wouldn't hold up to a school setting or a workshop setting. Um, the handle is just a little bit too delicate at this moment. So I'm re-engineering this whole process. Uh, but the idea is the same, you know, this is at, you know, four inches diameter is like some of the largest that you can get at the hardware store. And of course you can scale this down and scale this up, right? Cause I have you know, two and a half inch diameter brayers here, three inch diameter brayer. So folks, um, again, this is really just mostly an informational session today. Um, we got about 15 minutes left here uh, that I'm looking at. Um, I really would like to open up the questions or comments. Um, it can be verbal as well, and you can show your face. It doesn't have to be just in the chat. Um, Logan, uh, Christina, if you see anything else in the chat too that can help me out. Definitely. Yeah, swing back around. Anything else, folks? Anyone want? Speak up or say something in the. Oh, what would you use for the caddies and roller handles? Um, so, the, so the caddies um, and even the brayers, I'm using five millimeter underlayment. Um, it cuts really fast and quick on my laser cutter. Um, it's sturdy. It could be sturdier. Um, I also will use MDF, quarter inch MDF for the caddies as well. Again, um, one of the bundled SVG files. Um, is for quarter inch materials as well. So you can use the underlayment or you can use the MDF. Do the handles go all the way through the roller core? Oh yeah, they do. Thank you, Chris. Questions, questions in the chat? Christina and I are, are available to do workshops. They do take a lot of planning and a lot of resources um, ahead of time. Um, I'm kind of full for the next uh, several months, um, but, but we are available if you, if, you know, this is, this is all to serve a community and make it accessible, um, accessible for people. Um, yeah. Does anyone um, want more details on any information we shared? Like, um, for example, any more tips on mixing the rubber or the assembling of the parts or just finding the supplies, those sorts of things. Um, you know, we can, we can cover anything that might have gotten um, covered too quickly earlier, if that is helpful. Aaron, thank you. That's a very nice view in the, um, in the chat. Uh, workshops. Um, we had we were gonna, we were scheduled to teach last summer at Women's Studio Workshop up in New York, um, but that got canceled. And I'm hoping they're going to rebook us uh, for this coming August. But we got a lot of questions coming okay. in. 
how difficult is it having act without having access to blades because of other heavy machinery? Um, I don't think it, it, it shouldn't be that difficult. Again, you can make the handles, um, the ends here out of, um, you know, gripper plugs and, you know, screw on handles um, as well. The only thing that you really need to do with any sort of machinery is just cut the PVC with a nice circular saw. Um, usually something that has like a 12 inch um, width if you want to cut four inches wide. Otherwise, if you have a smaller one, you can make smaller. Uh, but really the only piece of machinery that you do need um, primarily is just a circular saw for cutting the PVC. Uh, otherwise, you can pretty much make anything else with hand tools um, or even like a jigsaw. Um, and so you don't, you don't need a laser cutter if you even want to make your own wood caps. You can pretty simply trace out out of wood, the inside edge of your three inch PVC, cut that out with the jigsaw and then use a one inch, um, one inch drill bit to, well, yeah, drill bit to uh, make a hole for the handle to go through. Can you talk more about the base of the mold? The base of the mold? Um, yeah. This one has a video. <laughs> I was eating french fries. Oh, I'm not. Oh, no. I think. Okay. Thanks, Logan. Is a little bit of mold really sound? This is a four inch, um, four inch drain, drain cap for the PVC. Um, what's nice is there's actually a little ring on the inside that might be hard to tell, but um, it's just a little bit smaller than a three inch piece of PVC. So it actually is easy to look down here uh, and line it up so that you have nice even edges. Um, these usually run me about $8 here in the Midwest. Uh, otherwise, uh, the mold base is just two pieces of MDF. I just have a circular part at the bottom. Um, and then I have little tiny rings etched in at three inches and four inches that I can use for lining out the, P the PVC when I glue it down. And then I have, an, I have a second piece of MDF um, that is just a ring going around the outside that lets the four inch lock right into place there as well. So, you know, pretty, pretty cheap, pretty simple. It does, it does the same function as this. Um, it's just that this is $8 to get one. And for $8 at MDF, I can probably make a dozen of these. Someone asked about, does the rubber produce heat because it's a two part? Does the rubber produce heat? I've never noticed the rubber producing heat. Um, it does produce a little bit of a smell though. Um, so I do recommend having a ventilated room or at least maybe a large room. Um, and then the rubber does have a bit of a, a smell to it for a couple of weeks, but uh, use and cleaning and a couple of weeks of just airing out time, uh, we'll get rid of that smell that it has. For oil-based inks, we're still using um, this, the solvents we recommended earlier, which is just vinegar and- Mineral oil. Mineral oil and vinegar. All right, we found the hardest part getting the rubber out of the mold, but we did come up with a pretty decent trick to do so. We'll drill a couple holes through the top of the PVC and slide a piece of metal. Oh, that works, Aaron. Yeah, um, yeah, demolding can be the hardest thing, um, but that's why I think the applying the, the mold release once, brushing it off, well, brushing it and then letting it rest for five minutes and then doing the mold release twice and then brushing it a second time and letting it rest. Uh, the double application really does make uh, releasing the rubber from the mold that much easier, especially if you follow that YouTube link where I, the second video is me demolding the rubber. Um, it takes me all of uh, 30 seconds to do. Um, getting the rubber out of the mold can sometimes be the easiest thing or the hardest thing in this process. Um, I don't know if it, re I've never used Gamasol. Um, lithotine will certainly break down the, the oil, but then again, I would finish up with vinegar water degreasing after any other uh, cleaner. I think I got everything that was above those. All right. How are the handles? How are the handles assembled? Um, are, I'm sorry, was Mandy, was that in re reference to the, the roller or the brayer handles? The roller. So um, 
once I, when I have my core, I use super glue. I degrease with everything with a little bit of rubbing alcohol and I super glue uh, just the inside edge of the roller. And then I'll usually plop down the, um, the roller onto it and then let that set up. And then I super glue the other end. Again, those, those videos, those abbreviated videos from the YouTube link I have up in the chat, uh, you'll see that. And then once, once the caps are glued in, uh, I then put this handle, which goes all the way through. So it's a solid handle, one inch handle going all the way through. And then just wood glue that together. One thing I don't have uh, in, the, in the video um, is I normally assemble this core first and then I'll finish this edge with some shellac or polyurethane and then I put the rubber on at the very end. Does a rubber cracker melt with aqua wash inks or so? I don't know anything about any other inks besides uh, oil-based inks. That's all that I that's all that I have. It will take experimentation. Uh, one thing I should talk about that does bring up a good point is the life of the rubber. Um, again, this project has gone, been going on for a little over two years now. Um, and from my best estimates and research and uh, talking with other colleagues, urethane rubber has a life of maybe about five to seven years if cared for properly and also depending upon its use, amount of use. Um, and so obviously that's not nearly as long as like a Buna nitrile roller, which is last, which can last 30 years of taking care of well. Uh, but the thing is, it only lasts five, seven years and you get a lot of prints out of it. Uh, but, but if it does melt, if it does crack or break, you can cut it off. Um, you can cast another roller for again, $30 for a two pound kit of RioFlex and you can, and in five years, put another colored sleeve on top of this. So 30 bucks every five to seven years, not a bad, not a bad bet. Again, these, these aren't meant to replace, again, a really nice quality tackage roller, uh, but it's just meant to give artists access and ability to a quality DIY tool um, to help them get to that place so they can afford those things. It's also, you know, good for beginners, uh, good for intro students who like to beat things up Again, because you can repair them easily if they break or get um, dinged um, or torn or cracked. You can just cast another sleeve and put that on there. Do I just buy rods for the handles? Well, the, the handle is just, uh, again, from the hardware store in the wood section. It's just a one inch dowel rod. Uh, I just cut the size and then I round over uh, with some sandpaper. Does rubber sleeve stay in place by friction or does it need to get glued at all? Um, the rubber sleeve will pretty much stay in place with friction uh, and I've done that quite a bit. Um, I'm still researching on the best adhesive for PVC to rubber and I haven't found it yet. But what I will do um, is once the sleeve is on here, I will lift up these edges a little bit and I will run a very, very thin bead of super glue right along the edge just so that it tacks down the outermost edges with super glue. Um, and that's not a really strong hold. You can break it really easily, uh, but it's enough to just hold things in place and, and also helps from getting like mineral oil or, or ink inside of the edge there. Have you ever super glued this one? I haven't, that one's not finished yet. Yeah, so like this one has not been glued and um, you know, I mean, I would have to work really hard to try to get this back off. So just through normal use, it shouldn't, uh, come out, especially if you do use a little bit of super glue, but this one doesn't even have that. And it's still very stable just from the um, friction of the rubber being against the PVC. Oh, acrylic medium may work. I'll have to try that out. I think I have some in my studio here. Oh, um, actually we've been talking about trying to make something either textured or exploring the possibility of mixing durometers so that the ink would roll differently. Um, if we did say a marbling technique where um, we used one durometer, say for this pink color and a different durometer for the green color, it isn't something we've tried yet. Because we, do, we don't have um, research funding or support. But it's something, this. I'm a monoprint person, so it's something I've been really curious about. I've talked about with Ross um, trying to do some sort of a textured um, to make like sort of a patterned roller or a patterned rare. Where we're at with that right now is if there were texture on the 
um, inside of the core that we're casting, how we would ever get the two apart while still maintaining the one part mold um, integrity. Because we don't want to have a seam. Um, so we don't want to have to cut the PVC apart to um, do the roller because we don't want a seam in our brayer or in our rollers. Um, so I'm not sure how, if there was texture on it, we'd be able to pull it back out of the mold once it's set. But it is something that we want to explore and experiment with. Yeah, that's a great question, Tracy. Thank you for that. Um, how hard is it to slide the rubber on the inner core? It can, it can be a little difficult um, normally because I, I do like clean the outside of the core as well as the inside of the PVC with just a little bit of rubbing alcohol. So it does make a lot of friction. Um, and you do want to be a little bit gentle with this um, rubber sleeve because especially when it's been freshly cast, it's still pretty pliable. So if you pull on it or tug on it uh, really hard, you can actually deform this. Uh, this sleeve has been uh, demolded for about, I don't know, a month or so here. Um, it's pretty well set, so I can actually be pretty aggressive with it and it's not going to tear or, or deform anything. But it can be hard to actually get it slid onto uh, the PVC, even just getting this little scrap piece out takes a little effort. All right, folks, so we're, we're getting close to the end there. Um, I would really love to talk, talk more uh, with everyone. Thank you all for coming in today. Um, last thing I'd like to do is just share uh, some of our contact information. If you'd like to um, get a hold of us, um, you can get a hold of me through my, through my website, uh, also through my Instagram and also Christina's Instagram as well. And we just put that in the chat there for you folks. But we, you know, if you have a large community of printmakers that there's a need, we'd love to set up a workshop with you folks. Uh, if you can't do that, uh, but you can afford to buy the instructions um, and you're, you're really handy, um, those are there for you folks too. Um, my goal is just to try and get as many rollers and quality tools out there as possible to you folks um, and to continue this research for as long as we can, uh, making it even better. Um, so I really would like to thank uh, Print Austin for inviting us out. Um, thank you, Kathy. Um, thank you, Emmy and, and um, Logan as well for hosting us. Um, yeah, anything else, Chris? That's, I think you covered it. All right. Thank you all so much. That was amazing. Appreciate it. Thank you. Thank you all for being here. Oh, thank you, Phoebe. Appreciate that. Thank you so much. All right. Hope you all have a wonderful rest of your print expo. Um, and again, feel free to reach out to Christina and I through Instagram or my website. Uh, and I'd really love to talk about, talk about this more with everyone. Thanks, everyone. Bye, folks.